Hey everybody, so today I'm going to show you guys how to make homemade all-purpose nipple ointment or also called apno. I'm going to give you guys the recipe along with some information about it, like what you can use it for, how long to use it, just different information like that. For the rest of the video, I'm just going to refer to it as apno, but to give you a little bit of information about it, it's to heal sore, cracked, bleeding, and or blistered nipples, and you can even use it when you suspect you may have thrush. Now, if any of those symptoms last longer than two weeks with use of the apno, definitely go see an OB, your medical professional, an LC, whatever it may be, whatever you're comfortable with. Ideally, you would like to apply the apno after you get done nursing or pumping. So by the time your next nursing or pumping session rolls around, it should be just fine to not wipe it off. But if you're more comfortable wiping it off before you nurse or pump, you can absolutely do that for more precaution. Now, as far as my use with apno, I love this. I think it's a great ointment to have on hand. I made quite a bit of it before I had Remy, but I'm almost 11 months postpartum now. I used up quite a bit of it. I didn't have a reason to make it, but actually within the past few days, I got mastitis. I got a vicious clog I haven't been able to get out, which then gave me a blister, which then in turn gave me a cracked nipple. I am in desperate need of some apno. I have a couple ingredients left over from the last time I made it, so I just wanted to show you guys the steps on actually making your own apno. It's really not that hard. You can get all these things at a local pharmacy or I just picked mine up at Walmart. I have heard of people ordering the ingredients on Amazon, but I think it's honestly more expensive on Amazon versus if you went to Target, Walmart, Walgreens, Rite Aid, whatever. Now with everything all together, it cost me about $15 to make. That makes around three containers full to me. And since you only need a little bit each time, that will last you a long time. Like I said, I've made this before. It lasted me around 11 months. And I wouldn't even have to make it again if I wasn't in the position that I am. So you can see it lasts a long time. So you're going to need equal parts of these three ingredients, the first one being some polysporin. Now I don't believe that there's a generic version of polysporin, I've never seen it, but this does have to be brand name, it has to be this one. You should be able to find it over towards more of the first aid kind of things. It's by the Neosporin. Do not confuse the two. This is the box that you need. I wanted to leave it in the box so you guys could see it, but it is over towards the first aid type of stuff. So that's your first ingredient. So the next ingredient you're going to need is some hydrocortisone. I like this Cortisone 10, the intensive healing formula one. This you can also find over by the first aid stuff. It's just a little ways down from the polysporin and the stuff I had mentioned to you before. You can get a generic version, so that's your second ingredient. And then the last ingredient you're going to need is some antifungal cream. Now this one I got as a generic brand because it is the more expensive one. I got a huge tube because it was all they had left when I went looking for the ingredients last time I made it. Like I said, it makes no difference between the antifungal and the hydrocortisone if you pick name brand or generic brands. But you do want this one to be an antifungal. Now if you can't find the athlete's foot antifungal, or if you're more comfortable with it, you can track down Monistat 7. It's a myconazole cream, and it is going to do the same thing. It's an antifungal cream. It's just obviously geared towards a different part of the body. So whatever you're more comfortable with, they're both going to do the same thing. So that is going to be your third and final ingredient. And then the last thing you're going to need is a container. These are the little jars that I get at Walmart's travel section. And they cost, I think, 98 cents. Really inexpensive. I've never had one open or come unhinged on me. It keeps nice and sealed. I even keep coconut oil in these and they don't leak. So I really stand beside these. They're inexpensive and they're usually pretty easy to find. So the last and final part that you're going to want to do is you're just going to get whatever you want to put your cream in and you're going to just want to set it down. I've never used any kind of tool to do that. This is what I've always done and it's worked great for me. I'm just going to take this cortisone cream and I'm going to score everything that I have left in here. And then I just go ahead and I pack it down. So 
So from a side view, you can see what you're working with. It's not going to be exact and that's fine. If that bugs you and you want exact measurements, you absolutely can. But like I said, I've always eyeballed it and I've been perfectly fine. So with this one, I'm just going to go on the side. And since I don't have to like squeeze it out nearly as much as what I have to do with the cortisone, I'm just going to eyeball it and it looks to be pretty good. I'm just going to fill in this side over here a little bit more. But it looks pretty even. I know you guys are probably struggling to see that. But you can see down here. They're a little bit different color. And then last but not least. I'm just going to open up my polysporin. And put that in. So this is what the tube of the polysporin looks like. You don't get a ton with it. It is the smallest one. But I'm just going to go ahead. And just do the same thing here. That looks about right. Now my jar is a little bit overflowing, but I also do have that second jar. So if it is too much, I can always just go ahead and put some more in the other jar. And then I just mix it around with my finger because honestly, once I get done mixing it, I'm just going to go ahead and put this where I need it, obviously, on my nipple because it is cracked and in need of some apno. So I don't mind using my hands. Obviously, you want to make sure that they're nice and clean. Now, just with baking, I find my hands to be the best mixing tool. So that's why I also like to use my fingers. I can just make sure that nothing's going unmixed here. It's looking really good. Okay, so you can see I obviously have some around the rim, but I'm not going to wipe that off. I'm just going to take a clean finger and use that to get it. And then I'll just use these two fingers worth of Apno that I have on my nipples. But as you can see, it's sealed up and ready to go. And there is your jar of Apno. I typically label this as well, just with like a little sticker to let everybody know what it is. You obviously want to keep it up and out of kids reach and everything else. But there you go. You have a little travel size jar of Apno that will last you forever. Trust me. If you're watching this because you need Apno, because you're going through some breastfeeding struggles, I'm sorry you're there. I hope you get them resolved quickly and I hope this helps you feel better. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always, thanks for watching.